Next big thing, Jenny Hogan. This is episode two, take one. Hi, I'm Jenny Hogan. Thanks for joining me on this podcast. We're calling Brilliant Brains and Next Big Thing. I'm so excited about the guest we have today. We are doing something different today too. We're taking you out on location. We're at Spitfire, a wonderful restaurant here in downtown Seattle in the Belltown area. And you're all here with us to meet this wonderful guest, Jonathan Spazzato. He's the first person to have two companies sold to Google. Congratulations That's right. Thank on you very that. Much. As, yeah. a, as a tech geek, you're sort of you are a celebrity to me in this field. Well, that means of... a lot coming from you, Jenny. <laughs> and I, I... we've known each other a while as well. That's right, that's right. And he's also a graduate of Whitman College, a former athlete, just like me that's too. Yeah. You mm-hmm. lacrosse and uh, track. I ran track, yeah. Mm-hmm. Field, so yeah. we're learning about all of this stuff. That's right. You are chairman of one of my favorite online technology websites, geekwire.com. Yeah. Also, where we're located right now, Spitfire, your owner. Of this place too. That's right. Yeah. So a yeah, lot I know. Of That's a, I'm having my worlds converge today in a way that I can't possibly. Isn't imagine. it crazy? Yeah. So we're do, we're talking about you at your restaurant about technology and it's all coming sitting down together. with my friend about yeah. the next big thing too, which we're going to get to. Yes. Which is Jonathan invests in a lot of companies, mm-hmm. and I'm curious to know you have one that's going to change the way millions of women utilize taking pictures. That's exactly right. Yeah. So we'll talk about what that is coming up. That's right. But first, it's your favorite segment, right? Yes. Jenny's yes. Gems. Jenny's Gems. I love it. Yes. And I love that you know. Now, usually I ask guests um, if they know about it and I have to explain it, but you actually listened to my podcast. I so did. Yes. I, I wanted to be prepared so for you. The Gems, for people listening that are new to this podcast, mm-hmm. it's a moment in my life or some moments in the last week that have impacted me that mm-hmm. I want to pay it forward to people mm-hmm. and tell them about. And we recently moved. Uh, so my moments are to do with just a changing of routines. And the first one is uh, to do with stepping outside of your world or letting someone else step outside, look in and notice something that can really help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two adorable dogs. Mm-hmm. So do we, actually. You do have yeah, two dogs. Yeah, we're a one-child, two-dog family. So are we. Yeah. And your child's name, Holden. Holden. Yeah. My daughter's name, Sienna. They're both cars. I didn't even think of that because right, Holden is a is a car in, in Australia. Australia. <laughs> right. Right. And yeah. Sienna, even though we named her after uh, the Italy town, is uh-huh. a car now. I love that. Look That's at that. a good We're connection. So Very smart. Exactly. Yeah. What are your dogs' names? Roxy and Norris. What are your dogs' names? Maggie and Lucky. Oh, so you or sort as of my son the... says, Maggie and Yucky. Oh, my son yeah. says uh, Rocky instead uh-huh. of Roxy. Right, right. How mm-hmm. old is your son? Um, he's almost four. Okay, so yeah. they're sort of, she's almost three. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we, we're very, with a one kid, two dog family. Yeah. Two dogs is a lot when you have a kid. It is, you know, and, and I'm embarrassed to say that we sort of forget our dogs. We, we they were our kids, and then when Sienna came, same yeah. thing. Yeah. So we uh, were living in this house that we loved and thought would mm-hmm. be our home for a long time, and now uh, we were renting it. Our landlord came back from yeah. Egypt, so we had to leave really quick. So mm-hmm. we thought we'd do executive stays for a while to oh. see what area we wanted to live in. Yeah. Smart. We couldn't have our dogs during that time. Mm-hmm. So we thought, oh, it's going to be 30 days. Uh, ended up being a few months. We just got our dogs back, and we put them into this wonderful woman, Michelle. I call her my dog hero, mm-hmm. uh, her house. She looks after dogs. And... Um, They went to doggy fat camp, man. Our dogs had so many treats and were huge. Uh And they've come back, and I can see their ribs. They're tiny and skinny. And she gave me a lecture on you feed them once in the morning, once at Uh night, treats or carrots. Uh Uh And, I mean, just boring stuff. What were you guys doing? How many times did you feed them? Well, dogs, and the only thing, like, they had to enjoy life Mm -hmm. treats, right? Mm -hmm. We were just open feeding them. I see. Do you feed them off the table? Uh, Well, our daughter would feed them, too. I mean, we were just... It took stepping them out of our lives. I mean, our dog ran. I was like, Roxy's running? I (laughs) (laughs) I have to imagine, what kind of dogs are they? A puggle and a beagle mix. So this puggle, usually they're around 20 pounds. She was like 45 pounds. So now she's healthy. So that's my gem is Mm -hmm. sometimes it takes someone else Mm -hmm. to, even though you're loving and you're thinking you're doing the right thing, to look at a situation, do something, and then... Our dogs are really happy. It's taught me, oh my goodness, we only give them a cup of food. Mm -hmm. I feel bad. I feel like I should feed them more, but Mm -hmm. just having them away and they're alive and healthy and they 
flourished on this. Yeah. So Very that's good. my first gem. That's cool. I can't believe I learned that we are now even more similar yeah. Yeah. with our two dogs. The second gem is my, you can hear some bangs here because we're live on you location. Are, hey. yeah. uh, the second gem is my daughter and sleeping. And when you move kids around, yes. they're out of rhythm. And how important yes. routine is. Yeah. And Tell so, me about it. So talk about yeah. this face that you're showing me right now. Mm -hmm. Well, so we, truth be told, we, in full disclosure, this is probably TMI for your audience, but we have not been sleeping uh, very well uh -huh. lately. So, so we are getting our cub muppets from the time that he was an infant because I used to just, I probably was insufferable. I would tell my friends like, oh, he's sleeping great. Sleeping all through the night, no problem. That's this baby we stuff, were, no but, problem. Yeah. But as they get older, as you know, they start Something to, the brains develop. Right. Yes. And they have more fears. They have more hopes and aspirations. And then at the same time, they have more fears. And, things and it that comes they worry out about. in their sleep. I've That's been right. Googling this yeah. and reading online because Sienna's been having some sleep terrors. Yes. They are right. the worst thing ever. Do you have, yeah. Has Holden had those? Yeah. He'll, well, he will claim. I'm not actually sure if this is sleep terrors. I know, or else they get used to the attention of you coming in. Right. That's what I'm wondering. Right. So for people that don't know what sleep terrors are, I'm mm -hmm. just learning about them. Um, it's when your toddler wakes up, it's between mm -hmm. the REM and the next sleep. Their mm -hmm. nervous systems yeah. aren't developed yeah, yet, right. and so any anxiety comes out, yeah. and they scream bloody murder. Their eyes are awake. Mm -hmm. So the first time, I thought she was awake, mm -hmm. but they are asleep. Mm -hmm. She's running into walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's yeah. freaking out yeah, during this yeah, time. And it's yeah. really scary for the person watching this, but she doesn't know any of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure how severe yours are. Yeah, but. well, no, no, it's diff a little different, yeah. but, but the, the same impact on our lives. He will just come in to our room, our bedroom, and yes. wake us up and say, and say the sweetest things. I mean, you can't. What do you do with the with when when your little toddler says, "I, I just want to be with you. I love you guys I'm so much," and you're like. You know, and so, so of course, the right thing to do if you want to get any sleep whatsoever is to walk them back to their room and tell nice. them that you love them. And um, it's the um, right thing so. to do, but when you're in bed and they want to come and just curl there with yeah. you, you, you let so them. So she's half doing the time. that too. So yeah. the sleep turret, and then she also it's it is that moment where they're in a very soft sleep, but the emotions yeah. come out. So yeah. whether it's the lovey right. or not, right. but right. I I'm now in her bed. Right. So yeah, exact. So that's hard too because you are out of your comfortable yes. bed. And then um, the long and short is, kudos to you for not at all looking like you are uh, sleep deprived and you're alert Thank and you. um, effervescent. And um, oh, I just appreciate you saying that it's happening to you too. I thought I was yeah. alone. Oh no, so, no, okay. it's it's been an issue. Everyone that uh, uh, works with me, I mean John Cook, Todd, yeah. they'll tell you that I talk about this way too much uh we're out to lunch or whatever and they'll say you know they're always asking me now like how's the sleep situation i'm like still working on it's it you know? but apparently they grow out of it and they click out of it people say yes. so fingers crossed yes. <laughs> right. right so all right we will get there we are great parents yeah right it's all about love mm -hmm. all about love that's right yes yeah. and uh so that was my gem. I can't remember what it was now, but it was a great conversation. Yeah, I'm was... sorry I interrupted. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> no, the, you're not interrupting. Okay, you're adding uh, and you're making me feel yeah. like, because these are moments and it's it's nice to hear that someone that I look up to so much also has oh, these in that. real life too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We're all right. human. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's what's really interesting about, um, I think these discoveries, I think a show like this can help to, you know, everybody is, um, um, you know, if, especially those of us who are parents, but even if not, we just have so much commonality as people. Exactly. And actually, ironically, actually having children made me realize that. It's like everyone was once a child. Or Don't you realize everyone, every day how yeah. much your parents did? Like every yes. day I'm like, oh, I need to call my mom and dad and thank them. Absolutely. It, Absolutely. It's completely fundamentally changed my relationship yes. with my mom. Yeah. You know, I was raised by a single mom and... Uh, uh, for for the first nine ten years of my life, what a and, woman! Um, I you know I don't know how she did it. So, so do you have a gem from the last week? Yes, yes, I have a gem. Um, well, I don't know that it's as good as yours, but um, I don't know if I helped anyone there. I was more uh, venting and complaining yeah? and saying, "Help me with my gem." No, so maybe gonna, your gonna, gem. Well, mine, mine's. Well, last week I was thinking a lot about this old old quote from Henry Ford. Yes. Right. And 
I think it's really applicable. You know, nowadays the icons of, 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 of industry are, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk or, or Steve Jobs. Um, mm -hmm. His legacy is still with us. And, but back in the day, I thought it was amazingly prescient when Henry Ford said, hey, look, everyone, if you had just asked the public what they wanted at the time that I invented the automobile, they would have just said, give me a faster horse. So I love that quote because it really underscores this point that sometimes I think you can't be riddled with too much analysis paralysis about, about trying to uh, be very um, uh, uh, consensus driven and data driven about your business decisions. Yes, absolutely. You can listen to what your users tell you or what your audience uh, wants to know more about. Um, that's always good, but that is only one um, sort of signal that you should pick up on. The other signals are what, what's, what's, what's the future? What would actually be a, a, a new value that you're creating or an innovation? Well, it's so. like I always say, because um, I'm always trying to work out and solve this puzzle of what's the future of television and broadcast yeah. and digital. And it's a painting to me that hasn't been painted. So mm -hmm. I, I sometimes I can yeah. see it, yeah. but when people like describe it to me, I'm like, how do I describe something that you've never seen and I've never seen? Yeah. But just I think when you're passionate and you innovate and you want something, you can see it. Yeah. It's just, it's a little frustrating. Yeah. But you're right. When people, this is a very big research industry. Uh -huh. And to me, research is frustrating because mm -hmm. it's asking people only what the paintings they know that they can right. see. Right, that's right, that's right. So. I mean, we used, to th we used to think a similar thing when, we, when I was working in games, like um, when we were like, you know, working on Xbox One and a lot of those games, it, 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 it was- You just said you just working on Xbox One, so just yeah. talk about, I mean, you're yeah. a humongous part of this Xbox that these gamers are using what, right what, now. Yeah, what, what, it was a team, team effort. Okay. And, and there were a lot of people that were involved. But you but, were there. But, but uh, it was really neat to be, well, I would say in on the ground floor. Yeah. You know, when, when uh, someone like Jay Allard and Ed Freeze, when they, when they really started to, pitched this concept of Microsoft needed to do a, a game console, which at the time, I mean, we take for granted now, but mm -hmm. at the time, Microsoft was a company that just did like operating systems and some applications, right? You know, Word and Excel and things like that. So, so an entire game console was a radical, radical thing. It's like, I don't know, it's like a car, it's like General Motors, you know, we were talking about cars earlier. Yes. It's like if all of a sudden they decided to make airplanes, you know, mm -hmm. it was that divergent of a thing. And so, so then to be in the same room with like six or seven, uh, sort of this almost a Jedi council of some really amazing people, I always felt like I was the dumbest guy in the room, you know, with other guys like Cameron Ferroni and John wow. Tomlinson and Doug Hebenthal, uh, uh, um, uh, Jeff Henshaw, guys. What you know, an it, awesome place to be for entrepreneur though, to be yeah. that, feel, that yeah. feeling where you are, I can learn so much from that's these right. people. That, exa that's exactly right. And we're literally trying to decide what is this Xbox going to look like? What should be in it? What should be the graphics chip? What kind of, uh, uh, how should we make it so that it's easy for game developers to, to, to do stuff on? Uh, and that was an incredibly exciting time. And um, I did take a lot of entrepreneurial lessons out of that. It was, there's a new term now called intrapreneurship, which refers to how people inside of a big company, yes. like a Microsoft or an Amazon or a Google, can do entrepreneurial things, but you're still And I love inside. companies that embrace that. Yeah, yeah. So that was, like before that term was coined, you were actually doing that. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, yeah, that was really cool. Happy so to I'm, talk about that. I'm anymore, here but. with a wonderful guest, Jonathan Spazzato. So excited. And the technology world, he's a celebrity to me. I keep saying that and you keep going red. And you keep like, why, why? But um, just the... Wait, did I say your name right then? Let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah, I want to hear you say it again. Spazzato. Very good. Thank you. That's great. That's per that was perfect. Where is it from? Well, it's Italian. Italian? Yes, and you're absolutely right to be confused right now. You see an Asian guy <laughs> with an Italian last name. So talk to me about well, that Okay, mix. all right. Yes. So, so as I mentioned, my, I was raised by a single mom. Yes. Uh, and I've never actually met my birth father. Okay. Um, but we were living in Brooklyn, and it was... I'm much older than you. This was the late 60s. So um, it was hard, right? And I love so, that you're so much older than me. I got my first gray hair a few weeks ago. And your first gray hair? Yeah, I swear it's a blonde white. 
Anyway, very blonde. There's gray hair. <laughs> I have so many gray hairs. But gray hair is like, cute on men. That's why I keep telling um, my husband. It yeah, looks good, well, but women, yeah. yeah. Well, we have to. Um, uh, luckily, women okay. have a vast array of resources <laughs> at their disposal in their <laughs> arsenal to uh, to attack that problem. Uh, but but my um, uh, my mother basically um, remarried, or actually got married for the first time mm -hmm. when I was around seven or eight. Okay. And so I was then legally adopted by um, my father, Don Spasado, who um, I, I've always referred to as my father, not as my stepfather. because He's your I was, dad. Yeah. yeah. So he raised me and taught me how to play basketball and other things and uh, so I've always kept his name and um, and it's highly confusing people assume all kinds of wacky things about what my background might be so do you know that my father is born in Italy so there I did we not go. know that. we have the Italian yeah yes whereabouts in uh, Trieste I see. so northern Italy yeah, have you been cool. to Italy where you I at? have I have and um, and I it's it's I, I, I don't go frequently I, I can't I just claim. been once I went to Rome and I wish I'd gone to where my dad was born it would have meant yeah. so much to him yeah. but I didn't do it well I think it's the case nowadays with the, the, with, with the way that North America is such a melting pot or anywhere yes. um, um, that you I don't know how much people feel that tied to you know it's really only been say two generations removed that yes. you know uh, from any other uh, uh, place but but everyone's know. from somewhere else everyone's from somewhere yeah else. that's right so yeah. true yeah so let's talk about uh, two companies sold to Google mm, okay okay first I I googled you you did yes okay uh -oh. And you know when you do. What are the first search results? <laughs> That's I what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Is and I want to just make sure I'm, I'm getting this right because my first search results are like uh, the places I used to work, like Jenny uh -huh. Hook in Cairo uh -huh. or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, right. Um, I think yours was, and I can pull it up. It was net worth, like people are googling. <laughs> Yeah. Well, is that what happens when you sell something it's, to yeah, Google? That's, so, so yeah, I, I guess so. Um, you know, Let Todd me. Bishop told me that the other day. He was He was trying to find, ironically, he was trying to find an old article that he had written about me or something yeah. like that. And so he, he, he went to, the quickest way was just a Google search. Yeah. And as he typed in my name. It comes up after that. Net worth. Net worth. And so so for, that's what most people are Googling yeah. about this person. I think that's what right, that means. Right, right, yeah. So um, I, I have to say that, that yeah. I, I like to joke that I'm really just a working class entrepreneur. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's um, I think people do, you're in the public eye much more than I, and, and probably feel this much more acutely. Mm -hmm. But people will project onto you um, a lot of things that may or may not be really uh, relevant or deserved or whatever. And, um, and to some extent, you have to learn how to just sort of roll with it. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. When so. I also learn, uh, I mean, I'm sure it was bought for a lot of money and there's a million dollars in there. There are other people that are in the company, yeah. and I mean, it doesn't all go to just one no, person. No, no, exactly, exactly. And the, as an entrepreneur, a lot of us, we don't do it for the money. It's like you do it for the changing the world and That's solving right. a problem. Yeah. And yeah. so it is almost an awkward space. Yes to go into it because it's, it's not part of if this is a game and I'm an athlete, that's not mm -hmm. where I'm keeping score on. I'm keeping right. score on the that's change and how much I do it's it. Like, it's like professional athletes. It's not, they're not keeping score because of the contract they sign, but it's because exactly. it's whether the they're MVP or, yes. you know, or whether they just, the fans love them or not. Or, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So that, that's Agreed. true. I did yeah. just come up with a very good analogy. I might have to use that one again. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to steal it if that's okay. So two companies, Picnic was one. Yes, that's right, picnic.com. And um, that's photo based as well. Right, so that, that was, um, I have to say that in, in just sort of absolute terms, in terms of number of users and things like that, we at our height, Picnic was 60 million unique users a month. What did that feel like? I mean, did you get a report to see? I mean, that's your it, product. It blows the mind. In fact, I would say that it really anything passed, uh, you know, even if you're past 10,000 unique users a month or something like that, it becomes so abstract. In the early days, I used to put it to the team with some really um, um, concrete examples. I, I would have like a like a PowerPoint slide or something, and I would have like, okay, last week, you see this? This is Husky Stadium. 
this many people used our site last week. Oh, that's giving me chills. And this week, yeah. You know, and then I would use like a bigger, like I'd use like the the Kingdom, you know, bef you know, uh -huh. uh, like before it was destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> this was how because it had like I think forty thousand capacity or something like that. So I would kind of scale it that way. And after a point, you didn't have the you start place. using countries. Wow. And um, uh, and I would say to, to answer your question, it's both abstract and exhilarating at the same time. Um, but you have to be very careful that you don't lose touch, that you don't abstract it so much that you lose touch with um, why people use your product and why they love or hate your product. I think that you still have to operate at the individual level and think about the personas, think about the people, individual mommy bloggers or students or people architects that this. use your site yeah. and think about what their needs are. Um, um, so. Yeah. Happy or sad moment when it's sold? I have to say, oh, when it's sold. Yeah. Um, bittersweet, bittersweet. Um, uh, happy in that it meant um, sort of validation for a lot of things. And not that we necessarily needed uh, that at that point, but it was still nice to, to have closure and an outcome, an exit, if yes. you will. Uh, we were profitable at the time, so we didn't have to sell, but, but it was nice to um, get a very, very, it was a nice uh, return on our time and our efforts. Um, but bittersweet because of the uncertainty of what, might, what often can happen when you sell a company to a buyer, especially mm -hmm. a big buyer, big brand name technology company, and they have other plans, they have other missions, they might want to try to collate you into other things that are exciting uh, and, and... But you're and, leading the ship, you're driving a bus, and right. then all of a sudden you're handing over the keys. Yes, yes, or, or yeah, that's a, a good analogy, or that you realize you are driving down a ginormous freeway with about 20 other buses, and you're yes. all trying to make sure that you're going in the same direction, and sometimes you just want to veer Take off and exit. Take that turn and go to the little lake. And yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. I'm just going to go over there. Yeah. So. No, you can't anymore. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> so then two years in, and they shut down Picnic. Right, they sunsetted the product. So um, uh, I would say that that's, that was very hard. And um, you do have moments in your life when certain things, um, and, and I don't know if... This is a gender thing. Um, I'm generalizing. Yeah, it's hit it with me. But, I want to see what. I, if well, it I is. think men are not as like. I think sometimes. Well, I'll speak for myself. Okay. As as a as a man, I I feel like sometimes my emotions. They catch up to me in unexpected ways. Like I don't really realize that I'm going to be sad about something, and then like the day of, uh, uh, or like the week leading up to it, I'm feeling bad about it or happy, whatever the event might be. And so it, 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 it affected me in interesting and surprising ways. I just want to ask, um, yeah. what's the female side? Because we well, just I feel think, it, right? I think, yeah, I think women know, like I think the moment, I think they yeah. might even f almost intuit that something is coming. Like they don't really need it spelled out for them. Yes. You don't need oh, the actual. Oh, I know actual, when the emotions, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like I mean, for me, it was like when I actually spoke with my superiors at Google and mm -hmm. they said, all right, Jonathan, we're gonna we're thinking of doing X. We're gonna sunset picnic. I, I it took me to that moment before I realized, oh my gosh, really? Picnics. Is that really happening? And um, maybe others on the team would have said, well, you know, there were signals. They kind of started to say, like, you know, don't worry about making new features for picnic. Just focus yeah. on this other thing, or or put it in maintenance mode. It'll be fun. or. You know, don't worry about your margins and, and the profitability of your product unit. You know, that's, that, that's okay. You know, that's all cute and all that you guys make money for yeah. Google, but, but <laughs> we, we, we have other things in mind for you. So, 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 so I think um, for me it was uh, 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 definitely um, uh, a little harder to deal with than I expected, but at the same time I took it as a growth moment to, um, I mean, it's a high class problem, what am I talking yes. about? You sell your company, you sell your internet tech <laughs> startup to Google, and after a couple of years and millions of users, they decide to shut it down because they have other priorities, and you, you're bummed out about it. I yeah. mean, that's a high-class problem, so I shouldn't. Uh, no, but it's, it's something that we're living through your eyes, and thanks for sharing, because yeah, we watched this happen, and 
there is a real human there, you know, behind yeah, this yeah, stuff yeah, happening. Yeah, so that's it's, right. yeah. I think it's great to hear, and we're all entrepreneurs and dreaming big, and mm -hmm. what if? Yeah. What if we get to that point, right. you're educating us on when my company is gonna get bought by one absolutely. of these. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, there, there's all kinds of emotions. I mean, yeah. I remember the, the highlights of Picnic were, you know, when we first started getting like a million users mm -hmm. a, a month, or I can't remember if it was a month or a week, and all of a sudden you realize, wow, that is a big, big number. So what, the or, other company is Fat... Oh, the other company I sold to Google was in was five years prior, mm -hmm. which was Fatbits, with P-H-A-T-B-I-T-S, and that became Google Gadgets. I've used that. Yes, that's right, yeah, a little... So that little, was you, so that's Yeah, that great. was Fatbits, that was, uh, 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 it was a really, really great project, uh, really great startup. Um, pre-social media, right? Interesting, So it was yeah. a very pure, I would say it was a very pure software applications play. Like it was all about a really great uh, set of uh, mini XML applications and, and a platform for anybody to be able to develop. You don't have to be an engineer and you can create like a, your own weather widget or calendar widget uh, that can always live on your desktop. And it was actually quite strategic to Google at the time to want to be on people's desktops even before they opened a browser. So that was an interesting And then experience. from these sales, you have been given the opportunity to help other companies yes, that's right. create yeah. visions. Yeah. And so yeah. you invest in a lot of companies that's too. Right. Yeah. So let's get into the next big thing, what yeah. this podcast yeah. is talk to, talking about. Right, right. About. So a lot of things. Of course, GeekWire is one of them. And, yes, and I do want to talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's uh, Visify down in Portland. Mm -hmm. I love these guys. These guys are kind of doing your canonical, rich online persona, and and it automatically updates based on yeah. It kind of automatically updates itself, so you don't always have to curate it. Okay. And it's brilliant and visually stunning. Visify. Uh, can you spell Visify. that for yeah. me? V i z i f y. Okay. Visify. Did I spell that right. I think so. I think so. It's yeah, hard to imagine when you're not a word in my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, my apologies. Anyway, I know I would have said my daughter's name because we're trying to spell that right now. But <laughs> right, right. I, I've also invested in Pocket Doc, okay. which is down in the Bay Area, and that's um, P O K I T D O K. You do have to spell them because it, I know. all the URLs everybody's are gone, so you have to change. Yeah. I know. Everyone's everyone's trying to be so <laughs> clever with it because the URLs are taken up. But that's innovating in the healthcare segment mm -hmm. and really bringing greater transparency uh, with. Uh, to, to, to end users, to people who are in need of um, some sort of health care, but they are trying to decide what their solution is. Um, and they can look up things that are out of network or even things that are more homeopathic mm -hmm. as an alternative to uh, Western medicine. So that's really cool. Pocket dog. Cool. Um, and then there's Every Move, uh, which is Russell Benoit. Oh, Maria. I didn't know you were in that yeah, one too. Yeah, okay. I love that one too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's a fun one. Um, and then, uh, but, but, but another one, which I am just over the moon about, is PicMonkey. Spell that as yeah, a P. P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y. And in fact, Jenny, I have a something for you. I, okay. I would love to, uh, on behalf of the PicMonkey team, giving give me you a this t -shirt. Pick Monkey t-shirt. Yeah. Made of win. Made of win. I love yeah, it. That's right. So Can I put it go. on right now? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank so, you for putting it on. So, pick monkey. Yeah. Next big thing. Yes. You're a genius in the picture space. I wouldn't say that. Well, say so that. picnic got was the picture based. That's true. Yeah. And now yeah. pick monkey. Talk yeah. a little bit about it while yeah. I get dressed so, over here on the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Looks good. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So I've invested in pick monkey because precisely because. Um, How's it? Is it okay or my? I think it's okay. great. Just changing there right on. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast. I like it. For people listening, I've got a T-shirt on. It's gray. Has uh, pick monkeys? Is this your slogan? The yes, slogan that is. Okay. Made of win. Or, made of or, win. Or photo and betterment is the other oh, one. Oh, I yeah. like that. So, All right. Yeah. So it's it's currently it's changing the way that um, really millions of, of of women across the world are dealing with their photos. So so um, you know there are things like Instagram. Everyone knows what that is, and um, and it's great, right? Because you can channel your inner rock star photographer. You know, just one click and your photo looks pretty decent. You can take a fairly crappy photo and it's no, still decent. No, I love channel your inner rock star photographer. Right. right. I totally right. do that all right. the time. But, 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 but I would say that Is my problem, microphone okay still? Great, okay. Yeah, you know, I would say a problem with things like Instagram is like after a while, everyone's photos kind of look the same. 
right? Yes. So something like PicMonkey, I, th I would argue it's the most fun you can have with a photo in a web browser. Uh, uh, and, and, and these people, we give them all kinds of tools to do amazing, artistic, uh, fine, nuanced things uh, to their photos, making them really, really artistic. So where can I find it? Is it? Uh, Pickmonkey.com. Oh, so you just yeah. go to the website and right. do that. Yeah, that's right. And you okay. can just go. There's nothing to download, nothing to install. You are ready to go. You can make collages. You can uh, uh, really, uh, you can make um, cards. So you're making everyday person be able to look like. Exactly. And the, some of the people behind the scenes here know how. Um, yeah. I'm going to call myself dumb I am on images and changing them. You're and not, even, I've seen your blog. It's really beautiful. It's really well, well done. Well, I put in the wrong sizes and, I, right? yeah, oh, and you, I try and cut th them and put you. them on Word. And, okay, yeah. This is all I'm you. Going it, to you, this. you. You check it out. Uh, and I cheat, I basically. You. So it would be nice to not have to cheat because cheating takes time because I'm opening Word and cutting and yeah, inserting yeah. an image and trying to. No, this is, this is brilliant. Okay. I, I, I have to say, you know, on behalf of the team, uh, as you know, someone who's invested in the company, it's, it's, I'm so bullish on them and I'm so proud of well when you say something's brilliant I'm listening I'm yeah. going to this that. website yeah. yeah and I do want to yeah. quickly bring up yeah. GeekWire yes mm -hmm. because the team there it's been so supportive of me and just wonderful to just check on that every day it, yeah. I mean that's a different investment for you it's, yes it is it's not the it technology is. it's no. media that's it's right. exactly what I'm passionate about and doing too so yeah. where where did that passion come from yeah well uh, well there's sort of a story of how it started um, but I'll, I'll bookmark that for for a second the I think that to, to more to your point really mm -hmm. what you're trying to ask is that I, I I think every opportunity at every turn as an entrepreneur you want to think about or at least I want to think about what new things am I going to learn this time, right? Because you don't want to just do the same thing over and over again, yeah. right? If I was still doing like a Fatbits XML platform right now, it'd be, it wouldn't be that interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so GeekWire represented a completely sort of a left turn. Like what is the sort of most unexpected thing that you might expect Jonathan Splissato to do at this point? <laughs> he did it. Right? So, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of, you know, wacky things that people can think of, but, but, but I thought, um, being involved with media and frankly helping to advance it in terms of giving this community in Seattle, in the Northwest, the technology sector, a voice. Yes. That was very important to me. Not only a um, voice, you picked the two rock stars of yeah, technology. Yeah, John Cook and Todd Bishop are amazing. They are uh, really, I have to uh, shout out to them in, 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 in this way that not only are they great reporters, which is evident in mm -hmm. what they write every day, they are also really awesome business partners. They are really good people, um, uh, great work ethic, uh, um, uh, great values, people of integrity, and they're down to earth. Um, are, you know, I, I joke about being a quote unquote working class entrepreneur. I, 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 I love that. Uh, they're just really down to earth about scale and what's the right expense, what's not the right expense. Um, they're growing. How did We're they learn that? I mean, I've come from the media journalism. They came from, was it the Seattle? Yeah, uh, the PI, PI. PI. Both of them were at PI. One of them might have been in another paper, like at the Times or something like so that. So they're prior. not business trained. They were. No, no. In fact, I was giving, I was actually giving Todd a compliment uh, only because we were just having a, I would have given the both of them the same compliment, which was that I, I'm now kind of recalibrated. I think now. People who are who come from journalism, I think, because they are thoughtful, um, they generally they've been dealing with people and are fairly yes. in tune to people. Mm -hmm. They make very very good managers. I was so impressed with some feedback, management feedback that I think uh, um, uh, Todd was giving to one of our more junior members that that I I had to tell him that that was really great. And uh, so anyway. No, it's really true. I'm just thinking people. about the day and when you do do local news, you are basically an entrepreneur startup every day, managing yeah. your photographers, your editors, your team, yeah, yeah. and you have to have a result and get it out mm -hmm. to the consumers, and you get e immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. it is that mini yeah. cycle of doing right, a business right. daily right. as that's well. Right. So yeah, that's interesting. That's right. yeah. So what's your story with that? Oh, so the story was um, uh, my my friend Glenn Kelman, who's the CEO of Redfin, was really and he's. A vi another really generous, great guy as an entrepreneur. He hosted a dinner 
Um, I was just going to say, if you host a dinner with your friends, yeah. <laughs> it would be cool to come along. Yeah, absolutely. So. Done, done. Yeah, I'll, I'll invite you to to some uh, uh, dinner, or you, and you can invite me to your. I'm sure your dinners are they're, just, they're just probably, uh, I got uh, some just uh, friends, amazing. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. So Glenn was hosting a dinner with mm -hmm. Mike. Arrington of TechCrunch. Mm -hmm. He came up, or I think he um, sort of lives in Seattle part-time, I understand. And as you know, he, Mike Arrington is a very polarizing figure in tech media. And uh, there were a lot of other CEOs there. And uh, John and Todd, I think Todd was also there. At least John was there. And there was this really witty banter that went back and forth between them and Mike Arrington, the, the, the fellow journalists on the table. And Mike Arrington was just being obnoxious about like, and at the time those guys were at Tech Flash. John and Todd were at Tech Flash yeah. at the, with the Puget Sound Business Journal, and and Mike Arrington was like, I can't believe you guys are sort of, uh, I, I'm paraphrasing, forgive me, but but um, um, you guys are just slaving away as you know, sort of salary men, and you you gotta you gotta you know, you can't write about entrepreneurship and startups if you're not living wow. entrepreneurship, and that pushed some buttons. Understandably, That's and true. there was this That's argument great. back and forth, and I was watching, and and I was paying attention, and then somewhere between the entree and dessert, I kind of pulled those guys aside. At least I think I pulled John aside at yeah. least, and I said, "If you want to do something, let me know because I will support you." Wow. Um, and and um, and then years later, like at least two or three years later, John gives me a call and says, "How serious are you about?" This and I said I'm dead serious. I, I uh, as I just said, I, I like to branch out, learn new things. Mm -hmm. I think I'm fascinated with the alchemy that can be created when we put our heads together, right? Yeah. What, what if I think about you know my expertise is in um, user experience mm -hmm. and designing product and branding. What happens if you apply that with their amazing, amazing journalistic uh, editorial sensibilities? Um, uh, and we had this idea that let's let's push it a little bit edgier. Let's let's really, it's named GeekWire, right? So let's let's have, uh, celebrate. Let's embrace uh, geekhood. it. Geekhood, yeah. you know, like 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 we'll we'll, write, we'll do an interview with Jeff Bezos, but at the same time we'll go down to Emerald City Comic Con and check out all the cool kids that are <laughs> dressed up in their costumes and you know really you know geeking out there, and we'll we'll do a photo essay on that. So. It's a lot of fun. And that's man. what you've been doing. You've been very true to the brand. I mean, yeah. it's, you know who you are, your voice is, the Geek Wire. Right, right. And right. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, thank that. you so much. Yeah, it's, it's been really great to have your support too, uh, Jenny. It's, oh, um, so uh, great to have that yeah, as, a, yeah. as almost role models to look at. And there, you are innovating in this field and uh, working we it out. So. Yeah, we hope so. And we, we take you know feedback and, and if you think that we're, you know, Oh, people write comments, right? Yeah, <laughs> they do. That? They do. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it can be a bit much. Well, and then great. Todd will to... write back to them. I see that, which is really it's great. Yeah. You're listening. Right, uh, right. I want to go on a tangent. Yes, please Where do. we yeah. are right now, Spitfire is a restaurant. I mean, you're owner of this yeah. too. Yes, I know. And I'm so having a convergence about, here. Great. Yeah, yeah. Right. you your portfolio doing different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, becoming a restaurant owner. Yes, yes. And it, now it's all converging into doing a podcast, right, being right. on the forefront, talking about your technology companies in your restaurant. So what is that? Yeah, is this well, a moment for yeah, you? So it's, it, yeah, it is. It's a nice moment. I mean, you always dream of more synergy. Um, I mean, I was always the So this was all born out of, the bricks and mortar stuff was really born out of an attempt, I would say over 10 years ago, when I, was, when I myself was sort of a salary man, so to speak, at mm -hmm. Microsoft, wanting to broaden and diversify out of technology. Here I was working at a technology company. I had some stock options at that company, and then the rest of my portfolio was all invested in technology. So, so I decided to kind of go old school, and um, I started buying, uh, along with uh, some other business partners, some ugly duckling properties, commercial properties in the Seattle area, Capitol Hill, Belltown, and sometimes you can take uh, a building and you can convince others that they should set up shop. You can convince a law firm that they should be in the building, in the building Great or tenants. like a bar or a restaurant yeah. to, to be in a retail floor. And a lot of times you can do that, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you're a little too early or maybe you are just wrong about 
uh, the, the footprint. Or, yeah, and, yeah, exactly. And so, 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 so actually, this location here, uh, the Spitfire, um, uh, 2217 Fourth Avenue, was was in this weird zone. Like it was between some office buildings and some apartment buildings had been leveled, and they hadn't built up new ones yet. And it was the old sit and spin. Um, bought it, and couldn't really talk anybody into setting up shop. So we really, it was it was me doubling down. And saying, okay, so so let's do our own thing here. And the concept of the Spitfire was born to sort of channel. We knew we wanted to do a sports bar or media bar, but we didn't want it to necessarily be like the kind of the the the, the pitchers of cheap beer and the peanut shells on the floor. We wanted it to be a little bit more. Uh, we wanted to go after a slightly different audience, you know. So the name Spitfire was to invoke, you know. Old British sports cars and it's a cool place to come and hang out and, and film a podcast and watch TV. It is yeah, yeah. have a beer, but watch. I've come here to watch reality shows and yes, tweet that's along. Right. Yeah, that's right. I have yeah. the UFC fight, which yeah, you know, the husbands I know, are being into, and yeah, who knew? but you do feel like you're out at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is yeah. that is a little step up from the corner bar. That's right. That's right. But yeah. you get to hang out with friends and enjoy. That's so. exactly right. So so that's been a real fun thing to do because you know, to kind of weave in some themes about how we think about entrepreneurship. I do think it's really important to cross-pollinate with a broad section of people in your community. Mm -hmm. And some of the relationships I have here from the Spitfire with people who work here, uh, who've, who've, who've worked here, and you know, and at restaurant jobs sometimes, it's young people who are like on their way to grad school, yes. and, and so people have moved on, but, but some of those relationships have been highly rewarding for me that like like you understand you know what not every young person with all the respect to the, the great people I used to work with at Microsoft or Google mm -hmm. not everybody's really that plugged into technology or isn't that or, good to or, step or, out yeah. of sometimes yeah, yeah. And, and they have real-world concerns about yes. their apartments or their cars or their schooling or their parents mm -hmm. and and it's interesting or relationships and it's really great to be able to interact with them uh, uh, about those things and, and, um, and to see how our customers respond to things that we're doing. So again, really appreciate to, uh, um, you know, well, it's you funny because we, so. one of our production extraordinary people asks you if you want some water and you're like, wait a sec, I, this is my place, I should be asking should you. Not, and we're like, but you're our guest. So right. yeah, it yeah, is yeah, the yeah, merging we'll, we'll, of everything that's to right, come together that's right. for this moment. So yeah. thank you so much for being here. You're very welcome. I would love to know what all the listeners can do for you if there's one thing they could do right now oh. to make you smile yeah what could they do I am caught a little flat-footed right now but I the first thing that comes to mind is this is gonna date me it's sort of like something <laughs> from a Bill and Ted's excellent adventure yes. like it's just do we need the music to one another I just like be, that. be 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 kind to each other we're, we're really not here very long we're really not as a parent, you feel this way. Mm -hmm. You understand acutely that the time passes very quickly, kid scale, and you know, uh, yeah, just, just, just. I like that. Let's make this place a better world to live in small ways or big ways. So, and what's your Twitter so. handle or a way people can just oh, say just, hi? Oh, um, just at Jonathan Sposato. You can just find me that way. Great. Can so. you spell that at J O N J O N A T H A N? I believe no space S P O. S-A-T-O. And say Jonathan hi. Jonathan Sposato. Yeah. And say hi. Yeah. And I don't usually do this, but is there anything I didn't ask you? Because you know me well. Uh -huh. Or anything you wanted to talk about that I didn't, we didn't cover? Let's see. I would love to interview you That's someday. what I thought. Is yeah, there one yeah. question that I didn't yes, bring up that yes. you could throw back at me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we should do that. We should have you interview me. I'd be intrigued. I would what, love to. We should just turn to, yeah. Let's like go. Do, you ready to start again? A, yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. be back. <laughs> I would ask it. You know what? I would ask. Um, oh gosh, I don't know what door I opened yeah, here. <laughs> I would ask if you don't mind. Yeah. This is going to require a candid because because sure. I've I've so I'm fascinated with this zone that I think sometimes people, whether they're business personalities or media personalities or whatever, there's this gray area, or maybe not so gray in your yeah. case, where you have to draw boundaries in a certain way. 
And I would love to. I mean, you don't have necessarily have. This is your show, after yes. all. Yeah, like, you know, but 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 I but can like, edit how do you? This. I have what's, what's, who, no. I'll, I'll say it this way. Yeah. In your mind, what is who is one person whom you really admire and respect for their ability to effectively balance their public persona while maintaining privacy and drawing the right boundaries? And how that, do they do that? And you know. That is something I'm learning along with my community uh -huh, yeah. because of social media it yes. allows you to have I a know, community. You're, you're large and in charge there on that. And I've always said, be you. Mm -hmm. Well, my boss, Todd Mokhtari, that told me to get online, mm -hmm. gave me those two words, yeah. and that's how I've treated it. Yeah. Uh, in journalism, you're not always told to be you. You're mm -hmm. told to hold back your feelings and thoughts. Yeah. I see. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, I yeah, live one life through the TV, but on yeah. social media, I mm -hmm. it's basically uh, behind the scenes, a reality yeah, show, and that's yeah. how I've treated it. Right, right, right. Um, having a daughter, I'm new to that, mm -hmm. and how much to let go or not. Mm -hmm. So I am yeah. learning. I don't yeah. have any rules. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to just be me. Mm -hmm. uh, knock on wood, nothing has gone bad that has yeah. stopped me. I, mm -hmm. Amazing community, everyone's yeah. been supportive. If yeah. someone does say something bad, my community responds and mm -hmm. protects me. Yeah, good one, good um, one, yep. Mm -hmm. But someone who I would look up to that does that really well, oh, I, you guys know, Ariana Huffington. Oh yeah. I think. Yes, good one. Would be someone yeah. in the spotlight helping give people voices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and put them in a place to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, she's the next generation. She doesn't really, you know, mm -hmm. she's not on the online. But she is rather, uh, yeah, she balances that really well. That's yes, true. and her beliefs, and mm -hmm. she has taken a side and stance on things, mm -hmm. um, but still very respected. Yeah. Uh, it is, it's a risk Yeah. to put right. yourself out there. Right, because uh, sometimes people just kind of completely retrench, too. Yes. I've seen that, where they yes. just... And, and that and that could be a fine solution for them. And uh, I've wanted to before. It's seems binary. Yeah. Sometimes it, you get to the moment where you're having your first child and you don't want to share yeah, this right, thing right. that you've never been through. And right. it's a, it is a balancing act of yeah. just trial and error. And maybe I'll make some mistakes. And, right. um, but I feel alive and I'm doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'll take it if it's. If it's awesome. a mistake and it ends my career of journalism, but I'm really passionate about it and yeah. that's what I feel is right, yeah. then I'm the only person who's made that decision to do that. Yeah, that's good. Well, you know, one of the things that I've always really admired about you, Jenny, is that um, along these same lines is, um, I would say I would I would include you on a short list of people whom I look up to with wow. regards to this thing. Yeah, because I think you are, it's clear that you're not, you're not afraid to be who you are. And I also think at the same time, and I think this is very fundamental, mm -hmm that you, whether you, re I'm sure you do realize it, that, that, that you have a persona uh, that is number one, not made up, but it's a persona that is very um, uh, approachable and likable and you recognize, I think your intelligence as a business person is in recognizing to go with that mm -hmm. and not to, because you do see sometimes at least in the corporate world, in business, especially when people start moving up, um, like maybe they, they get promoted, they become a higher visibility vice president, they, and they have to do more public speaking, they feel like oftentimes there's a person that they have to become. Yes. I have to now be really serious. And, yes. you know, not, not show any vulnerability, and it's, you know, and, and I have to talk a certain way. And, and, um, and I think the world is uh, much more uh, interesting if we can just be ourselves, and, and I think a lot of times, um, anyway, recognizing well, who you I are. Well, I then... almost wish I recognized that out of college. Yeah. It took me a while to recognize oh, that. that. Right? I think through television and viewers emailing, the, the three things they emailed me were my accent, mm -hmm. they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So when people email, they mm -hmm. email things they don't like. Yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. a world of people out there that aren't, yeah. are happy with my accent, but they're not physically going to the computer. Yeah. I dress yeah. to... Uh, feminine and fun. Oh, you get feedback that you dress and too feminine. I'm and I'm too fun. smiley. So those three People things. People tell you you're, you're too. Sm that's. A <laughs> that was the first few years yeah, of my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a decision of reading this and changing for them mm -hmm. and becoming like every yeah, other yeah, TV right, person right. they yeah, wanted to, yeah. or embracing what I thought were my negative yeah, attributes. Right. But if I look back at my that's career right. now. Yeah. I think the three things that stand out of why the community has embraced me is because I have a, a mm -hmm. twang, I'm different, mm -hmm. I have the mm -hmm. Aussie accent. Yeah. I am positive mm -hmm. and I want to make people's lives yeah. better, so I'm smiley. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I do like to dress nice and look good. Yeah. So those three things, when people tell you to change, mm -hmm. sometimes listen to that, right. but realize that is yeah. what makes you you. Right. And I think that was a big learning lesson to watch the feedback and get that and then see the those things people are trying to change were actually helping my career. I mean, right. it confuses you. No, but... I, I totally can, I really appreciate that. Um, I, I have my versions of those things as well, where you go back and retrospect, you go, well, I think that's why. It's what makes those... me me. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. And that's so right, when I so. mentor people, I'm like, just be you because, and I help other people too, because you are not really competition. The boss is going to pick who they're going to pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. you can be the best you, but you can't yeah. be the best someone else right, you're trying right. to be. May I ask you a follow-up question? Sure. Because I'm still interviewing Jane Hogan here. Okay. This is uh, uh, once in a lifetime chance. You're yeah. funny. Um, my follow-up question is: How do you decide whom you help? Or like you, you, you mentioned that you mentor some people. Yes. How do you oh just decide? Gosh. Hard. How, who? who you who you respond to and who uh, might might that you might not? Because uh, uh, with the, uh, my assumption is that you have way more. Uh, demand for your time than you have time. So. You know, I am um, amazingly lucky to have wonderful people in my world mm -hmm. that have mentored me. Mm -hmm. And the one thing they say is pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I will answer the phone. I will email. If someone says meet me for coffee, mm -hmm. I will do it. I mean, that's mm. that's great. The that's great. value from yeah. those people. I there's how can I not do that to yeah. pay it back to the people yeah, that have good, been so wonderful to me. But as my career has grown, I've gotten more and more people yeah. coming to me mm -hmm. and. Um, that's why I actually launched a Go Girl Academy, a 10-week sort of mentorship course. Oh, nice. yeah. And it's now called the Springboard Academy. It takes uh -huh. men and women, and yeah. I'm just founder and have stepped mm -hmm. off that, mm -hmm. but yeah. not a public yeah. um, part of that at all, uh -huh. just very uh -huh. proud of what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But it was more so I didn't have to do 10 lunches a week. Mm -hmm. I could put all these women in one class. That's You're teaching smart. them the same oh thing. Why didn't I think of that? Over a 10-week Yeah, you don't class. have to do 10 lunches a week. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it, they have the pay it forward. There's 50 women here in Seattle uh -huh. that are through that and they yeah. all sort of help each other. It's just, um, and that's not for money or profit or to mm -hmm. sell. No, that right, was right. me pay, saving time. I mean, it's sort of a selfish thing. Mm -hmm. I'm putting them into this one yeah. group. Yeah. Right. Um, but I also want to say that these mentees self-select. Mm. It's amazing how you mm. open the door and say, yeah. call me uh -huh. and call me back in two months and uh -huh. how many don't. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, or you say, I go speak to a class and I mm -hmm. say, anyone email me, I'm there yeah. for you, and mm -hmm. you don't get one email. I see, yeah, 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 they do self-select, yep. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if there's a go-getter uh -huh. that wants a mentor, yeah. Yeah. just it's your job as the mentee to set that schedule up right. and keep the relationship going. Right, that's great. Does that Thank make Thank you sense? for that. See, I learned so much from okay. talking with you. Yeah. Look, I learned so thank much you for from coming you on too. my show. You're welcome. Do you have any Jonathan's gems? We're going to call them now. Yeah. Jonathan's well, thanks gems, all of you right. for being along for the show, and that was awesome. Yeah. So thanks for the time. Thank you so much. Yay. Oh, Do we wait, get a fist we... pump or? Yeah. I don't, what what's, what's, what's do you feel like? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so I'm much. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff.